Hello, my name is Bruce Shaney, and today I'd like to take a look at combination locks, something that's been around since uh, the early 1900s. In this case, the master lock is fairly simple. It's got 40 numbers on here, and we turn it to one of the numbers to the left, turn it to another number by turning it to the right, turn it to a third number to the left, and if we've done it correctly, of course it opens. Uh, the combinations for this, 40 times 40 times 40, should give us over 64,000 possible combinations. The uh, question is, is what is going on inside this lock? How does it, with all those possible combinations, how is there just one combination to it and how does it work? Well, to figure that out, I ended up taking one of these apart. I ground the back off to see what was going on inside because that's the job of science is to try and reveal how things work. So after I've done that, I ended up making a larger version of it. This is my large demonstrator model of a lock. And to see how it operates, it's fairly simple. If we take a look at the back, we can see some of the key pieces for its operation. The first piece is this part right here. It's a lever, and right now that lever isn't able to turn, and so it's holding the locking bar. Here's our locking bar right here. It's holding the one end of the locking bar in place, and it's not allowing it to go up or down, so the lock is locked. If we go to the opposite side of that, of that lever, we find a notch here, and that notch is actually resting against three wheels that are the inside of this lock. We are taking a look at the lock from the side. We can actually see the edges of three wheels. Here's the first wheel, and the second wheel, and the third wheel. Now what's important about the three wheels is that each one of these wheels, first of all, has a notch or a piece cut out of it. For this lock to open, each one of these pieces here have to be in the correct position, which would be right here, which is then going to allow this lever to rotate downward and release the locking bolt. Okay, now if we take a look at the wheels from the side again, there's one other piece that we need to take a look at, and that's these bolts here. These bolts are on each wheel, and if I were to take and turn it too far, these would engage, and that would actually turn the wheel beyond its, its correct position so that the lock's not going to open for the wrong combination. Okay, so let's go to the back. If I turn my wheel and line up that first cutout, which is right there, I turn the wheel in the opposite direction, just far enough to line up the second wheel with the notch into the correct position, which is about right there. Turn the wheel to the left again, just far enough to line up that notch. We see the pivot arm pivot down. That's allowing us to pull the, that's then releasing the bolt. And so now the lock is open. To lock it, we simply put the bolt back down into the hole, push down on it. And on a good lock, one of these wheels would actually turn slightly to keep this, this lever from turning again and that would start the whole process all over. Now it's locked and we need to go through all three numbers of the combination to get it to open. So anyway, there is my lock. It is visible. It, it's very useful in helping to explain how locks operate. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and now have a little bit better understanding of how combination locks are able to function.